How's it going everyone? It's uh, Kenneth here and uh, it is a very very hot start to the day. It's about 10 o'clock um, and uh, I thought I'd quickly come down to the allotment and water everything before it got too hot. Um, it's gonna be a scorcher today I think. I need to sit down actually. Um, and I thought I would give you a quick little update video on what's been going on basically. <laughs> So um, I think in the last video uh, I spoke a bit about uh, sort of my search or the start of my search to look for land and not long after that I actually um, stumbled upon a piece of land online to rent through a local agent. So um, I was a bit skeptical at first I thought oh, you know I don't know if it's worth it maybe I'm not quite ready yet but you know sometimes when opportunities show themselves you kind of just have to go for it regardless of what the outcome is and because uh, at the end of the day even if I ask about the land or put a proposal forward or which I did do in the end you know it doesn't matter until contracts are signed so um, I'll put a little picture or video up somewhere on the screen so you can kind of see what the land is about and I can tell you something it's been a huge learning process so far and I'm kind of glad just for that reason that I decided to go and try get the piece of land just for the sake of the learning experience the two main things at the at the moment that I'm finding sort of challenging are first of all getting planning permission to put a polytunnel up. Now you can't just call up the council and say can I put a polytunnel. Um, you have to go through a whole process at least where I live um, where you have to put a, a request to talk to someone put in some details about what you want to do so what the planning application may be about and then wait for them to call you and that whole thing took that process took about two weeks. And that's sort of why I haven't really made a video because I wanted to get a bit more information about the whole process before actually making it because I thought it might be handy to pass on to everyone else. When it comes to putting up a polytunnel, there's so many different things that planning uh, officers consider. And basically, after the 20 minute conversation on the phone, I left not really knowing whether or not I'd need a planning application. <laughs> uh, and I'd need to get a planning approval basically so he was quite vague it was like oh you probably won't need but you might need uh, planning permission um, lots of different variables can affect whether or not um, you need planning permission so it's kind of a minefield luckily in the UK um, not in the UK sorry in England it's different in Wales and Scotland in England you can apply you can apply for something called retrospective planning permission which basically means you can go ahead and do something and if you do need planning permission you apply for the planning permission then <laughs> basically so I might do a separate video or a separate podcast just on that whole idea of planning for a polytunnel because it you know like I said it was a 20 minute conversation the other thing that I learned about was land usage so it's it's one thing having agricultural land but depending on the specific usage I actually might not even be able to farm on there so at the moment it's classed as permanent pasture land and there are different classes of that so whether or not the land has been cultivated within the last 15 years or whether or not it's in a, a specific um, category of land called what is it now I can't even remember Okay, so I uh, I was just busy editing this video and um, I kind of don't know, <laughs> it was a bit weird the way I was talking. So basically I want to just quickly um, read to you what I read. This uh, There's a whole bunch of information out there. So if you search um, farming on permanent pasture, there's a whole bunch of information and different articles basically online. The, the one I found most interesting was on a, a lawful firm's website, so I'll quickly read what it says just so you, you understand where I'm coming from because I wasn't really making sense. A common question we are asked is whether or not a farmer needs to plough up a grass field to stop it being designated as permanent pasture. This question stems from a fear that once land is designated as permanent pasture, it will never be allowed to be ploughed again. This fear has been stirred up over the years by some scare stories in the farming media by those who have misinterpreted the rules. Basically, you can get quite a big fine if you mess around and you're not supposed to. I'm not going to get into all the details of it because it's you know goes on about different regulations and rural payment agencies, a whole bunch of things I don't really understand. Basically, let me just carry on. 
the rules you need to consider when thinking of plowing or increasing productivity of grassland are the environmental impact assessment regulations. These regulations do not take any account of whether the RPA, that's a rural payments agency, call the land temporary grassland, permanent grassland, permanent pasture or anything else. The regulations consider whether or not the land is classified as uncultivated or semi-natural. So I was mentioning the uncultivated part. I couldn't remember the semi-natural part. So that's what it is. Uh, we therefore need to know the definitions of these two descriptions. Uncultivated land is that... Uncultivated land is that hasn't been... That doesn't make sense. <laughs> cultivated in the last 15 years by physical means, such as plowing or by any ac uh, an activity that physically breaks the soil surface or by chemical means such as adding fertilizers or soil improvers. Semi-natural land includes priority habitats, heritage or archaeological features or protected landscapes. This normally means land that has never been intensi intensively farmed such as lowland heath or unimproved um, grassland. As you can see, there won't actually be that much land out there that falls foul of these rules. If you are concerned that your land might be classified as uncultivated or semi-natural and you want to plow it, you will need to apply to Natural England for a screening decision. After submitting your application, they will then tell you if you need to complete a full EIA that's it, or if you can carry on with your proposal. As you can see, the rules are not straightforward, but thankfully they, can actually, they are actually less restrictive than most people think. And if you want us to help you with this, come to us and we'll help you. So it will basically cost um, a huge amount of money. So I'll get back to the video now and um, hopefully that all starts making sense um, basically to what I was saying. So I need to speak to someone at uh, DEFRA or Natural England about that <laughs> basically um, because this whole thing, if I have to get permission to, f to f grow vegetables on that land, it could cost thousands of pounds just to get approval. Um, which is crazy because, you know, the, the piece of land itself is only 1.2 acres in size which isn't very big and it hasn't been used for a while and according to the agent who has got the um, the land up for rent it used to be farmed anyway so uh, it's a bit of a minefield really and I think I'll know more about that when I speak to DEFRA or Natural England to find out a bit about what that process is like I said I would rather do this now even if I don't get the land just so I know what I'm getting into um, you know moving forward so it's kind of positive in a way that I've got something that I'm working on towards farming um, but I'm not keeping my hopes up thought I'd just share that with you anyway because it's really interesting so if anyone is in the UK or in England and is a farmer or has gone through this process and knows a bit about it I'd really be interested to know um, your thoughts and, and what you've experienced just let me know in the comments below so other than that um, I have injured my knee or when I say injured it's a it's an old injury but it's kind of come back I'm wearing a wearing a knee brace so I'm kind of hobbling along I can't really go like squat I can't do deep squats or or get onto my hands and knees so um, it's been a bit tricky coming to the allotment and so I haven't really been coming down here that much or as much as I, I normally would have at least at, you know compared to the beginning of uh, the whole lockdown um, in, in March April but uh, you know, I've started to get a bit busier in my own little business anyway. Um, I'm starting to get more inquiries and some more work come in, which is obviously takes priority because that's how I make my money. So at the same time, there's nothing really to maintain on the beds. You know, I've, I've started my, my autumn successions of uh, oriental greens and some beetroots and a few other bits and pieces. The one thing I've lacked or haven't done much of is in maintenance. So weeding the paths and, you know, just keeping things tidy. And hopefully I'm going to come down tomorrow for a good few hours, as long as my knee can cope with the, the work and do that. So, uh, yeah, everything's looking really, really good. We've had a massive abundance of vegetables this year, which is amazing because we've put a lot of time and effort into everything. Um, and I learned a lot, you know, I've grown some new vegetables like fennel. Although I like the taste of fennel, I'm not too sure if it's a staple in, in uh, it would be a staple in my house, basically. I wouldn't, don't know if I'd eat it. The reason I'm growing it is to learn how to grow it more than anything because if I not if when I start farming one day got to be positive um, when I start farming one day fennel is one of those crops that you can sell to restaurants you know because it's quite a unique crop and it's got a you know obviously aniseedy licoricey flavor so they can do all sorts of fancy magic wonder with it I don't know but um, yeah so that's the only reason I grew it um, and there's also likewise there's a few things that I realize I, I want to grow more of and other things I want to grow less of so we, we grew a lot of chard this year and it's just absolutely mental how much we have. So next year I know that 
um, it's something we can cut down on how much we grow of, which gives us space to do other things or more of other things we want to grow. Uh, we've had some mixed success with all sorts of things. The, the French beans did really, really well at the beginning of the season, but then they got plagued by black fly, which is a bit of a nightmare. And our last succession, which is in a bed down there, is uh, actually doing quite well. So there is some black fly on it, but they're nowhere near as bad as what it was with our first uh, sort of spring succession. So that's something to try next year, possibly to maybe do French beans or green beans later on in the year rather than earlier. Yeah, so I'll see about that. But other than that, um, yeah, I just want to give you a quick update about uh, this whole process of me looking for land. Um, you know, like I said, that's why the direction I want to go with this channel. Um, it's about following my journey into um, becoming a farmer or a market gardener, should I say, and all the ups and downs and things I learn along the way. So hopefully in, um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll know a bit more. Um, I had to put a proposal forward for this land. I spoke to the agent yesterday and uh, they said they are going to put it forward to um, their client and at which point they've got to sit on a committee because it's owned by a, quite a large organization um, so they have to decide who gets the land basically and I think that's why I had to put a proposal forward um, so she said it could take three or four weeks which is okay because it gives me time to start looking into this whole natural England defra change of use whatever it may be so um, my next video will probably be about that and the implications of that and whether or not I could even go forward so uh, that's it uh, for today everyone I know it's a bit different to my, my usual videos but like I said I'm gonna start focusing on my movement towards farming um, yeah any questions leave them in the comments below any advice I'd really really appreciate leave those in the comments below or you can contact me through YouTube my email address is on there um, so that's it everyone. I hope everyone has a good day and enjoys a really hot weekend and uh, yeah, take care. I'll see you soon